What up, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Peace Kemp. Welcome to the best half hour of your entire Tuesday. You know what time it is. It's time to get into his court. And my squad would be T-Mac. Hola. Chili Will. Gracias, gracias, amigos. Let's do this. <laughs> to start the truncated NBA season. But it's not too truncated because we were only out. We only missed what, maybe thirty games? Twenty-five. Twenty-five, and they're 25. doing twenty. Yeah. What, twenty games? Yeah, twenty. Games. So we're missing five games. But those of you who are season ticket holders, you won't be going to any games. And even in Orlando, there will be no fan uh, participation. They're going to be in what's called the bubble. <laughs> the bubble. You know, they'll be like playing ball in one of them snow globes. No, you know? no, 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 it won't be that. <laughs> but they're, they're going to be very restrictive of who can come in and out of the hotels. So they're making sure they're stocked with everything but family members. Yes. So during this time, husbands won't have their wives. Uh, guys won't have their girlfriends. Fathers won't be able to see their kids. None of that. Um, some guys won't be able to be with their side pieces. All that's going to be eliminated. So we, they're going to have very restrictive who can go in, who can go out. I don't even know if they're going to even allow chaplains in at that time. They haven't talked about they, that. They talked about having, well, they're going to have chaplains. It's part of the NBA uh, collective bargaining agreements that chaplains have to be involved in some shape, form, or fashion. It probably won't be a chaplain representing each team. It probably will be, they, they might have a chaplain or two for the whole uh, event, but you also got to think that if you are a chaplain mm -hmm. and you agree to be in the bubble, then you're going to be there the duration. So right. I don't know if chaplains can uh, adjust their lives to actually participate. Yeah, I know. Um, so do you think it's going to be Orlando's chaplain? I don't know. I don't know how yeah. they'll do it. I yeah. don't know how they'll do it, but I know that it's, it, chaplain is part of the NBA agreement. Right, right. That part I knew, I just thought, okay, well, how, how are you going to do this? Because yeah. spiritually, Okay, you allow chaplains, but do you allow, you know, the Muslim leaders, right, the rabbi, the rabbis, yeah, boot, yeah. Well, are you going to allow all of them? I'm sure it's something in the collective bargaining agreement that spells that out, which, which they would have to adhere to yeah. contractually. I'll also say this, that uh, the way I heard it from um, some very high up NBA people is that there is like 14 people, um, staff members, mm -hmm. that can travel with the team. That means... Part of the trainers can't be there. Right. Part of the, uh, the, the the people who do all of their uh, equipment equipment managers, uh, all right. of that, uh, therapist, uh, right. all of that, it's, it's going to be a limited. So it's going to be. Even some of the coaching staff can't Even go some right. of the coaching staff. It's going to be it's going to be limited <laughs> to how many people go. And, of course, some people, feathers may be wrinkled a bit. Right. But um, this is the only way they can do it and do it. Uh, successfully, so they think. So it's going to be interesting who who will be a part of each team. You know, it's I'm glad that the NBA is living. Yeah. But how it's going to live, we'll see. We we still don't know. And again, this is all working too. It's yeah. still a work in progress. Right. They don't know what they do know is the NBA finals will be starting September 30th. That much they know. Yeah. Of uh, the Major League Baseball has agreed to 60 games versus that 100. Which, which might make me watch. Which, which is half because, no. No, they play that's a third. The, that's right. They play about 180 games. They right? play 182 games, I think. Wow. Yeah. But I think they had to at least do 60 for the players to get their money. Right. Because they were trying, because if I'm not mistaken, the ownership was trying to make them drop down to like, 50. Yes. And they're like, nah, we want, we want yeah, all of our money. They originally agreed at 20, and I think they went back to the original agreement. Right. So they're coming back. Um, I'm just looking forward to, you know, and then even there's some players that are saying, I don't want to be in the bubble. Yeah. It's some people who have actually, uh, Avery Opted Bradley out. said he's out. Right. Um, but did you hear who they're, they're talking about picking up? They picked him up already. So he is. Yeah. I don't like it as a Laker fan. I don't like it. I don't, you know, I don't who like is, it. Who I, is it? Let's say who it is. <laughs> no. Mr. Tattoo himself. 
Mr. No T-shirt. <laughs> oh, my goodness, bro. Mr. I didn't pass the ball. I held the ball when I should have passed it and lost me a finals. <sighs> J.R. Smith. Man. That's LeBron guy, though, so you know he had to get him. That's his guy. He but you know what, though? The thing that LeBron knows with J.R., I know what I'm going to get out of it. Well, he a dog. Right. He's, he's, some, he's a foxhole guy. Right. Yeah, he's a foxhole guy, so that's what he wants. They need more dogs, more foxhole guys. Um, uh, Trevor Ariza is somebody else who's opted out yeah. because of a situation that he has with custody of his son. Right. So he's opted out. A um, few other people have, have talked about opting out. Yeah, Kyrie said, but some of them are opting out for different reasons. It's not necessarily COVID. Some are opting out like, Kyrie was saying he doesn't want to play because he thinks it's going to deter from the Kyrie movement. Kyrie can't play. He injured. He can't play. But here's the thing. But he wants to go. And then you can't go because you, you're not an essential part of what's going on. You just want to be down in the bubble. Why? <laughs> Kyrie acting spoiled. Um, listen, if you have any problems with that comment, you can email Will at... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I Kyrie acting spoiled, dude. You ain't no ain't no reason for you to be down there. Are you not playing? And, and you're not. I don't know if you plan on giving mental support or what, but whatever. We don't got time for it during COVID nineteen. Yeah, and and my thing is, you know, do we think because of stuff like this that could happen? Do you think that 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 new structure of playoffs? You think they might go to? No. No. The playoff is structured for money. Because remember, it used to be. Uh, but I'm talking about the teams. You know how they're talking about. No, they're not going to do that. They're just not going to do that either. Just the 16 best, whether it be 16. No, they can't do that either. Yeah. They can't do that either because if you got, now you got all these teams in the East that won't be in it. What sense do it make to have a league if, if our teams can't be in it? I agree. I do agree with you. And I, I don't want it. It'd be like four teams from the East. Right. That don't make sense. I, and again, I agree and I don't want it um, because. A traditionalist just yes. wants. Yeah, I'm a traditionalist too. I just and want plus, the pureness. And plus, of it. Pastor, back when the East was dominant, right. why we didn't do it then? Right, right. I agree. When, when we when Jordan was winning it, Bird, when it was Jordan Bird, and Bad Boys, right. and all. Why we didn't do it then? Uh, because. Okay, so why not? We ain't because do it now. because L.A. still was a money maker. Yeah, we're not gonna do you it know, now. So, so no. you know, so I agree with you. But listen, I want to get into a topic. You know, we love doing these. Hold on. Before we, before we leave uh, my Florida yeah. and the pandemic, let me get some predictions. Who do you think, I mean, what's going to happen? Who do you think is going to, who do you think going to get that final eighth spot? Because right now it belongs to the Memphis Grizzlies. They're three games up, but they have some people hot and heavy on their heels. Do you think they're going to be able to fight those teams off? The Portlands of the world, the Sacramentos, uh, who else? Phoenix. Um, are they going to be able to hold on to that spot? Or will they re relinquish it? And then you got the top teams in the East and top teams in the West. When you start talking Avery Bradley not playing for the Lakers, that's a hard hit for the Lakers. Yeah. And, and I like Jr. but Jr. don't bring as much to the table as Avery, Avery Bradley in my I book. Agree. I agree. And then you got Trevor Ariza, who was on Portland, right. and now he's not playing. Trevor Ariza is that he's that he's a glue guy. He's a glue guy and, and a vet. Yeah, he's a he's a Swiss Army knife. Right, right. Plays exceptional defense. Right. So how does that impact Portland? I do think that for Memphis, I don't know. I well, let me say this. First of all, it is now a brand new season, so it really don't matter what your record was before. No, it does. It does. No, to a certain extent, because because you got Zion too. Zion them right on the heels of Memphis. Right. The NBA would love to see Zion in it. Yeah, but I'm looking at this and going, for a rookie, can you regain that momentum? I don't know. For Zion, here's some more time out of you not playing. Is that going to be rustier on your body? You know, for these vets, can they re-warm up, reset, hey. and repack? And then one injury, I mean, injuries, you know, injuries yeah. could, could make a big difference in, the, in what happens in the playoffs. And then even our home team, the Bucks. Right. When the, when the pandemic hit, Giannis was injured. Yeah. Now I'm sure he's fully healed now. Fully healed, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's healed and ready to go. So we probably don't, we probably going to be full blast for the first time in a long time. Last yeah. year, remember Devin Senso? Yeah, was couldn't injured. play. 
So yeah. now we're going to be full, got everything working for us. How is that going to work? You know, one of the things, it's difficult because we, we really got to see how their bodies are going to take it because looking at that schedule, they're playing back-to-backs, like hypothetically, I'm playing Monday, Tuesday, I'm off Wednesday, I play Thursday, I'm off Friday, then I play Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So they're going back-to-backs twice in a week. So, so who, does this, who does it favor? Does it favor veterans? Does it favor youth? I think it, from a mental standpoint, the veterans will be okay in the bubble. Why? Because they're already family men. They're right. already married. You know, they got their routine down. But right. for them young guys who's, you know, loving their life as a professional athlete and right. newfound millionaire, out kicking it, hanging out, going to the clubs, uh, all the honeys and all of that kind of stuff, how is that going to impact them psychologically in the bubble? Right. And are they going to close Disney World down for them to uh, have access no, to? No, Disney World is closed. Well, are they going to open it up for them? No. Yeah, yeah, they do. They get to go to play golf. They get to go to uh, all of the attractions at Disney Theme World park. they get to go to. Right. Yeah. So, you know, for, for them young guys, this is probably childhood lived with some money. Yeah, but, but, but some, of them, some of them want, uh, you know, their girlfriends. And I they, get it. You know, so now the, you got to have a manicurist got to be there. Right. The pedicurist got to be there. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> They're probably not gonna let any ugly manicures <laughs> <laughs> or pedicures hey, will not be allowed in the it's bubble. Gonna be, it's gonna be the best lobbying you ever seen in your life. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, for real, this, she does nails. She does nails. She really does. Right, right. No, no, no. This is my personal nail. You know, but um. Anyway, what do we got? What do we got on the list? What do we got on the list? But, but I do think. I think the Bucks are still very poised to take this. Yes. Um, I don't think the, the superpowers in the West, they needed the season to gel. Yeah. The one thing that the Bucks have going for them is they didn't lose anybody. No. They gained. They gained. Marvin Williams. Right. Yeah. But they didn't lose. No, they didn't lose anybody. So they they, 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 their they gained core. A, a Lopez twin. Right. Yeah. So they're they core, gained Cal Cal Corver. Right. Yeah. So their core eight to ten are still there. Yes. Versus other teams, no. Portland may be able to move up. Yes. Portland may be able to move up. Um, You're gonna see some real. It's gonna be competitive. Is Utah gonna be there? Is Utah still in the running? Or yes. I think Utah is in it too. I, I want to see how they're gonna mesh after this whole, you know, um, Rudy Gobert giving it to. Donovan Mitchell thing, yeah. cause there was a there was a beef about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they gotta they gotta swallow that if they want to try to get the yeah. chip. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll see, we'll see what that looks like. Yeah. Um, but he, I do still think it's the Bucks out of the East, and I also well, I, also I, think who, it's the Bucks for the two? championship. Who's number two in the East. <sighs> I think I have to go with Boston. Boston over Philly. Yeah. Over Toronto. Because I'm going with Toronto. You may now, be right. The, they're the defending champions. You may be right. They're playing as well as they played last year without uh, Kyrie. I mean, uh, Kawhi. Kawhi. And they're veterans. They're been, yeah. They've been there. Yeah. They got, I, think, I think that's the Bucks' challenge is Toronto. Yeah. But what was their issue last year, which was uh, Kawhi just being a – Stopper and a destroyer. And a closer. That and the fact that the Bucks went on a cold streak and where they lived from the three, they died from the three. You're such the a nice guy, Pastor. They went on a cold streak. Yep. A better term would be they choked. Well, hey, you know, I'm still a homer. They choked. <laughs> <coughs> they choked. They had a, somewhat of a hairball, but, you yeah. know, they, they're good now. Yeah. But so, but they added more shooters. In come Cal Culver. They added more shooters. And if he can shoot like he's been shooting, right. we, we shouldn't have that problem this year. And West, is this the second year? First year. So we also added West. We added West, too. So we're looking at some. Bucks some, look good. They're in a good position. Yeah, I, I think so. So you may be right with Toronto at two. And that Boston, Philly, I think is a flip-flop. I got to go with Philly over Boston. Do Boston you? too little. They don't have any bigs. Yeah. The, the big that they had now plays with Philly. 
Right, 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 right. So. But then what is their chemistry? Oh, and, really? Yeah. And here's the, here's the other thing. This layoff definitely. <laughs> I know what you get ready to say. Definitely made Embiid better. Yeah. Because now, you know, he whatever was injured or whatever was right. hurting is healed. Yes. You know, so that could be more of a, a factor yeah. of him being it's gonna a be full, healthy it's gonna Embiid. Be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. But I'm glad we got them, them, them twin towers to deal with their twin towers yeah. and not have necessarily Giannis holding either one and of them. And Marvin Williams is, is, a, is a great all-around player. Yeah, he and can he can score, stretch. he, he can, can stretch. rebound, he can shoot the ball, he can defend. He's good athletically, he's strong. It's a, and he can score a, off the dribble, too. Yeah, it's a big pickup for us. Yeah. Well, listen, <clears throat> again, we're going to go into this best six-man in NBA history. I looked up this survey. And it said, the best six men in NBA history. Number 15, his son plays for the Utah, I mean, I'm sorry, the Warriors, Golden State Warriors, Dale Curry. Great six man. Great six man. Dale, Dale, Dale Curry is a great six man. He was a six, he was a six man here too. Yeah. Great with the buck. Man. Historic. Yep. Number 14, the Jet. Jason Terry. Okay. All right. No beef so far. Yeah. Number 13, Cliff Robinson. For Portland. For Portland. Yes. yes Cliff, Cliff got buckets. Cliff was good. Cliff got buckets. Yeah. If it wasn't for Jordan, him and Terry Porter and Clyde would have got a championship. Yeah. At least one or two of them. Yeah. But Probably it's two. Jordan's fault. Number 12. John Starks. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> John Starks at number 12, man. I didn't see that one coming. Okay. All right. I didn't know they ranked him that high as a sixth man. I didn't see that one coming. I don't see him being in it at all, but what else we got? Number 11, Bobby Jones. Oh, yes. The Hall of Famer. Yes, Bobby the Hall Jones. Of Famer, Bobby Jones. From Philadelphia 76ers, played yes. with uh, Doc. World champion. Yes. Number 10. Michael Cooper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michael Cooper invented the alley-oop. Yes. He invented the alley-oop. Him and Magic Johnson invented the alley-oop. Yeah, they, 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 they definitely worked that to perfection. Yeah. yeah, Michael Cooper is definitely in it. Number 10. Number 9, I mean, which I thought should have been higher. Jamal Crawford. Yes. And he should be on one of these playoffs rosters right now. It's a shame that he ain't. I wish the, I wish the Lakers would have picked him up instead of uh, J.R. Smith. I wish the Bucks would have picked him I up. I wish the Bucks. If the Bucks pick him up, we win championship, hands down. Because hey, we listen. pick up him, that's it. It's over with. Because Giannis can be like, look, I'm tired. Let Jamal get buckets. And that me. second unit would be unstoppable. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Number eight, Bill Walton. I look at him as a starter. But I think, I think they're giving it to him from his, from his Boston, Boston days. Boston days. I, he should but he just, started more than he was a, a six-man. He's man. a Hall of Famer. He's a starter. Right. Yeah, he ain't. Mm -mm, no. So, no for you. You shouldn't even yeah. be on the list. Uh-uh. Number seven, a Milwaukee native. My man. Downtown, Downtown Freddie Brown. Brown. <laughs> you know what's funny yeah. is his sister is my godmother. Oh, is? Yeah. yeah. His sister is my godmother. And I asked my, I asked my uh, dad, how did he get the story? How did he get the name downtown? You know, he said, you know, Skip, everybody thinks it's from his shooting deep. It's not? No. What is, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought he shot it so deep, they said he's shooting it from downtown, so that's not how he got the name. That's what, that's what everybody else, that's what the NBA took uh -oh, it from. Oh, so this is a flash, a news flash right now. My father said, whenever Lincoln played North, Okay. After, when they played at North, there was always a big fight between Lincoln and North. That was okay. their, there was rival okay. schools. local high schools. And because there was fight on the bus, Freddie Brown wouldn't take the bus with everybody else. He'd take it all the way downtown to avoid the fight. And so that's how he got the name no. downtown Freddie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get some verification on that. That's what 
What's funny is I asked my mom and my dad that. They both said. Separately. They said. Separately from one another, they said it. Wow. That's how he got the name well, you know, to avoid got, the fight. I got a few resources, so I'm going to be checking that one out. <laughs> he took the bus downtown to avoid the fight. He took the 80. Right. <laughs> Right, but That's funny. don't get me wrong, he was an assassin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, my he goodness. Was, he was one of the first guys to shoot it from deep. Hey, when he walked on the court, he was in range. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was one of the first guys to shoot it from deep. Number six, mm -hmm. the microwave. Oh, yes. Vinny Johnson. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's in the top five, six men for sure. You know, what's funny is I was talking to uh, my, my, my youngest brother, and he used to hang out with a bunch of... Uh, NBA players, and he said, Vinny Johnson would smoke a pack of cigarettes during halftime. <laughs> he said he would smoke a whole pack of cigarettes during halftime of a game. He was nervous? It's just, he, was a, he was a cigarette smoker. No, he just was hooked on nicotine. Yeah. Wow. But we'll come out there and give you 30 I'm in 30 I'm seconds. Check, I'm checked. I know some Detroit people. I know some people <laughs> in Detroit. Some of their uh, some of their uh, management and stuff. I'm yeah. gonna check that one out. Check too. that one out. And make sure this stuff is true. Yep. Number five. This one kind of suspect to me. Good player, deadlift shrimp. Oh no. I don't think he should have been no. up that high. No, he shouldn't have been on the list. Him and John Stark shouldn't be on the list. Right. Right. Okay. Number four. Tony Kukos. Didn't play long enough. Okay. Great six man. Didn't play long enough. Number three. I have no problem with. Manu Ginobili. Oh, yeah, in the top five, six men in the league. <laughs> and got the rings to prove it. Right. Yes. Number two. Kevin, I'm going to head fake you 95 times, Mikhail. Torture Chamber Mikhail. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But he, he, was, he, he started a long time, though. He did. He started a long time. Right, because he started, he started most of his career. I think he started most of his career. Yeah. In the beginning, he was a six man. Yeah. But he started most of his career. Man, there's some people missing off this list. Oh, uh, no doubt. And then number one, and you could hear the sports man say it. And John Havlicek steals it. Oh, dude. Havlicek steals hey, it. The original six man. Havlicek. John Havlicek invented the six man. Yes. Yeah, John Havlicek. Oh, yeah. Now look, let me uh look, before we extinguish that uh list, let me put some more people on the list and make sure that these people are on the on the list. Okay. Lou Williams. Sixth yeah. man of the year back to back. Yeah. Probably won it three times. He should be on the list. Yeah, I agree. Ricky Pierce. Yeah. Ricky Pierce, legendary. For the Bucks. Yeah. Legendary. Um, I would say um and one of the other people that I think is missing that should be on there, Junior Bridgman. Oh. Junior Bridgman was a hell of a th uh, six man for the Bucks. <sighs> if he wouldn't have gotten hurt the times that he got hurt when the Bucks in the playoffs, we would have another championship. Yeah, junior, Every time we went, Junior, junior was hurt. Yeah. But Junior Bridgman was one of the best six mans in the history of this league. Those are some people who I thought was missing that should be on the list. Now, let's, let's, let's break it down. Let me ask you a question. Okay. I'm thinking about the Bucks and, okay. and, and that era you're talking about with Junior Bridgman, Ricky Pierce, those guys. Yeah. Do you think it was a bad trade when we got rid of the flick, Alex English? I, I, I think it was a bad trade. Because he went to Denver and started giving. Well, well it was a bad he trade. He was giving buckets to us, for us, and then he started giving buckets to us. With hindsight in yeah. mind, terrible trade. Yeah. But at the time, we didn't know he was going to be that. We didn't know he was going to be what he turned out to be. Yeah. Had we known that, we, wouldn't have not made, we would not have made that move. We yeah. didn't know he was going to be as good as he was. Yeah. Let me, but I'm looking at this list. Okay. Does Dale Curry have a championship? No. Jason Terry does. He with, does. With uh, Dallas. With Dallas. Cliff Robinson does no not. No championship. John Starks does not. Bobby Jones he does. does. Michael Cooper does. Yeah. Jamal Crawford does not. Does not. Bill Walton does. Yes. Freddie Brown does. Yes. Vinny does. Deadless Shrimp does, does not. Does not. And the rest of them do. Tony Kukos does. Manu does. Kevin McHale does. And Havlicek does. Yeah, so if you didn't win a championship, you're off the list. So that, 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 that eliminated some of the people you thought. Shouldn't have been on it in the first place. But 
Cliff Robinson should have been on it. Cliff Robinson was a good, he was a good six man. Right. He was. He was a good six man. Can't argue with that. And Jamal Crawford would eliminate it because he doesn't have a championship either, does he? Right. He's eliminated because of that. But he was a hell of a six man. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this cat was, you would hate to see him in open Dude, court. I would love for the Bucks to pick him up oh my on this playoff run. And even if you give us 50% of what you had. Man, look, if we had that man, matter of fact, I'll, I'll, we can, they can just bring the trophy to Milwaukee. They can start on their way there with a, with, right. a, with a donkey right now. Right. You know, so now these guys are valuable, valuable, extremely valuable for their teams. Um, now, speaking of value. Hold on. We're not, we, uh, who's the best six man in the history of the league? Well, they say, they're saying Havlicek. They saying Havlicek. Well, how many rings does Havlicek have? He got a couple. Just two? He got a couple. Are you saying have the check? You know, it's hard for me to say because I'm not as I'm not as familiar with his. Okay, let's break the list down a little more. Let's go back to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. We took off everybody who didn't win a championship, all right? right? Let's right. take off everybody who's not in the Hall of Fame. Okay. So the Hall of Famers that's on the list is Bobby Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bill, Bill Walton. Walton. Is Freddie Brown in there? Freddie Brown is not in the Hall of Fame. Vinnie Johnson's not in there? Vinnie Johnson's not in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Tony Kukos is not in there? Nope. And man who's going... will be. Will be. He will be. So now it leaves John Havlicek. Is Kevin McHale in the Hall? Yes. So it leaves John, Kevin, Bill. Michael Cooper's not in there either. Nope. And Bobby Jones. And Bobby Jones. So that's one, two, three, four is what that leaves. That leaves four. What are the four? John Havlicek, Kevin McHale, Manu Ginobili, and Bill Walton. All European Americans. Right. Right. All right. Right. And out of them, for me, it would probably be Manu. 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 For me, it would be Manu. Yeah. It would be Manu Ginobili would be the best six man in the history of the NBA. Now, I would say, just from me and my era, the best six man in the history of the NBA, you may or may not agree with me, was the microwave. Vinny the microwave. was unstoppable. You called him, but we had to take him off. Right. Because he wasn't in the he, Hall of Fame. He, he was in the Hall of Fame. Right. So we had to take him off. But I am, to me, Vinny Johnson was the best six man in the history of the NBA. Yeah. Now, based on what my... Criteria is, um, it would have to be uh, Manu Ginobili because we agreed that he's probably a first ballot Hall of Famer. Right. He's not in the Hall of Fame now, right now either. Right. But he probably would be a first. But he just ballot. retired. What last year? Two years ago, maybe. Two. Yeah. And, and you got to be out five. Five to, get into the Hall to of get Fame. Get into the Hall. Yeah. So, so that that would be my that would be my list. And then, you know what? I want to give a shout out to Bay Lou. Local basketball celebrity youth enthusiast uh, community guy. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say his I'm gonna say his real name on TV. You know his real name. You know Baylou's real name? No, what is it? Willie Mitchell. Oh, okay. Yeah, shout out to you, Willie Mitchell. Okay. Big shout out. Hey, listen, great show. There was a whole bunch we could have got into, but we always got next week. <laughs> so listen, until next week, we'll see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Joy 1340 AM 98.7 FM. You can also check us out on Facebook at Into His Courts and also YouTube. YouTube channel, go subscribe. Be a part of the movement. Until next week, have an amazing week.